May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning, Cathedral family. Let me begin by saying, I am a daddy's girl. My father and I used to have a special ritual. We were the early risers in our family, and so every so often on a Saturday morning, my father would appear at my bedroom door and whisper, get dressed. Then while my siblings and mother were still sleeping, he and I would quietly sneak out of the house and go to our favorite place for a pancake breakfast. Even as I got older, we would continue the ritual. I cherished the time, that time with my father, not only for the pancakes we ate, but mostly for the laughter and conversations we shared. In fact, there is one time and one pancake conversation that stands out to me, and that is the one we shared the last Saturday before I was to go off to college. I remember doing that, during that breakfast, my father saying to me, Kelly, he said, now it is up to you. He went on to say that he and my mother had done the best that they could in providing me with the foundation to go out into the world without them. They had tried, he explained, to teach me right from wrong and to set an example of what it means to be a good and productive person in the world. And so now, he told me that morning, it was left up to me, up to me to go forward with what they had provided, trying to stay true to my upbringing, growing into my best person, and trying to make a difference in the world for the better. I was taken back to this conversation as I read this morning's gospel, as it comes from the last discourse between Jesus and his disciples. Now, while my father and my pancake conversation was not our last discourse, Jesus' words to his disciples were much like my father's to me. For in Jesus' last discourse, he let his disciples know that he, through his life, ministry, and teachings, he had provided for them the foundation they needed to go forth into the world and to make a difference in it for the better. If you love me, he said to them, keep my commandments. With this simple directive, Jesus makes clear that the disciples are to go forward and that as they go forward, they are to be motivated by nothing other than love. Indeed, there is no theme more prominent throughout Jesus' last discourse for his disciples than that of love. You will recall that in an earlier part of this discourse, Jesus says to them, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I has lo have loved you. It is therefore a loving way of life as exemplified through Jesus when he walked amongst them that is to define the life of the disciples as they go forth carrying the work of Jesus into the world without him. And so keeping Jesus' commandments is not about adhering to strict rules of do and don't, but rather about a way of living that is a way of loving Jesus as in fact he loved us. And so what does that mean? What does it look like? What is the way that Jesus showed forth for them, indeed for us, in order to follow him into the world? It is fundamentally, I believe, a generous way of living. My parents often told my siblings and me, no doubt quoting from Proverbs 11, they said that kindness brings its own rewards. In other words, they were telling us that we should be kind, not because we expect something in return, but because the act of kindness itself is fulfilling. Cathedral Church family, this is what generosity is all about. 
a kindness toward another when expecting nothing in return except perhaps the satisfaction that comes from being kind. More specifically, the generosity to which Jesus calls us is a kind, selfless, unassuming, quiet, self-giving for the purpose of enriching the life of another. For throughout his life, he displayed a generosity that was not about the giving of money or lavish gifts or any other material riches, but rather he displayed a generosity that was about the giving of himself, even unto the cross, so that others, so that we might have life. We are to seize each opportunity that is there for us, to give not to ourselves, but of ourselves, be it through showing up, through service, through understanding, through a word spoken, whatever it may be, we are to give of ourselves without expectation of reward, return, or recognition so that others may have and enjoy the abundant life that God has promised to each and every human being. In fact, Generosity is the fruit of our souls, that part of us that links us to God, as generosity is nothing less than the perfect human response to God's very grace toward us. It is with grace that God has so freely given God's self to us, expecting nothing in return. Why? So that we may have life and have it more abundantly. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. So as he was generous, so must we be also. And then we must also be, as I have said at various other times, we must be other regarding. Always reach out to the unwanted, my dad would tell us. When Jesus walked this earth, he touched lepers, he healed the sick, he publicly engaged women, he went to the Samaritans. It was to those persons considered untouchable, expendable, inferior, unacceptable, to those that were othered, as in marginalized and unwanted by society, it was to those that Jesus reached out to, being for them an embodied sanctuary of welcome, of healing, of shelter, of support, of regard a sanctuary of nothing less than God's righteousness, thereby letting the unwanted, the other of the world, know that there is no one that is unwanted in God's world. There is no one that is othered in God's sight, period. And here is the thing, church. It is through those who are othered in our world that we, in fact, see the face of God, for they are the measure of God's justice. When, Lord, did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? He replied, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. To other the other is like othering none other than God. Therefore, the way of Jesus that is ours to follow is for us to be other regarding, to be for those that are othered in our world, living sanctuaries, which means this. There should be no one while in our present or that is present to us that should ever feel unsafe, unwelcomed, disrespected, or uncared for by us. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus said. So we are to be generous, we are to be other regarding, and above all, we are to be decent. The other night, on a panel in which I was a participant, I was reminded of something that I would sometimes hear my parents say about various children they would see out. They would say this, they would say, those children were raised by decent people. They knew this because those children were themselves being decent. To be decent is about the little or perhaps not so little things that mark our very sacred humanity. 
It is about displays, for instance, of gratitude, like saying thank you or I really appreciate you. It is about displays of respect, as in saying sir or ma'am, or bending down to talk to a child, or looking up when we speak to a person. To be decent is about not passing the buck, but taking responsibility, so knowing how to say I was wrong, I made a mistake, or my bad. It is about living honorably, thus being truthful, not deceitful, and acting in ways that are dignifying, not degrading of others. In the words of the apostle, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, church, this is what it means to be decent. And this is who Jesus was, even unto the cross. And so when others cursed him, he did not curse back. When others spat upon him, he did not spit back. When they hurled hate toward him, he answered with forgiveness. And so it was that the centurion was able to say, this man was the son of God. In cathedral family, to be decent, is for us to show forth the decency, that is, the goodness of the very God in whose image we have been created, the very goodness of our sacred humanity. For God looked over all that God had created, Genesis tells us, and God said that it was good. When all is said and done, when others look out at us, even when we think nobody's looking, they should be able to say, now they are the children of a good and decent God. As I stand here today, sadly I must say that we are living in a time where far too many people seem to be paralyzed, not knowing quite how to respond or what to do in these disconcerting and disturbing times of ours, even as they perhaps make excuses for what they don't do. But here is the thing, we who claim to be followers of Jesus, we who are people of God, and that is all of us, we should never be paralyzed. We have no excuses for not knowing what to do. Jesus made it clear to us in his living as he reminded us in his last discourse, if you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. And so in this our quid pro quo world of deal-making, where the model seems to be do for others only if they can do for you or do only for another that which is of benefit to you, we know what to do. We are to be generous, finding ways to generously give of ourselves so that others might enjoy the grace of God that is abundant life. In these times where every day it seems that more and more people are being othered, othered because of who they are or are not, or because of where they are or are not from. In these times when othering another seems to be the standing operating practices of our society, we know what to do. We are to be other regarding sanctuaries of God's welcoming, healing justice. And yes, in these our indecent times where prejudice, narrow-mindedness, bigotry, and intolerance are considered acceptable ways of expression, we know what to do. We are without excuse to be decent people showing forth the very goodness of the God who created us. And here's the thing, if we are generous, if we are other regarding and decent people, then we will be embodied reflections of the one who is perfect love, that is, God. It is no wonder then that Jesus promises his disciples that they will not be alone after he is gone, for to show forth the love of God is to love as Jesus loved, and therefore to keep alive the very spirit that is Jesus in the world. But that's perhaps a sermon for another day. On this day, I am reminded of the last conversation I had with my father before I went off to college. As he said, it was left up to me 
to go forward with what he and my mom had provided. So to be my best person, again, to make a difference in the world for the better. In essence, he told me that I knew what to do. And so it is for us on this day, we are all reminded by the gospel that it is left up to us, to you and to me, to go forward with what Jesus has provided for us, to grow into our best generous, other-regarding, decent selves, so to make a difference in this world for the better. Cathedral family, we all know what to do. If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. Amen.